High stakes in the College World Series. Elimination game between Stanford and Arizona. Top of the third is where we pick it up with no score. There's two on one out. Brock Jones. Okay. That was a strike. It's a double. So a couple would come in to score. And Stanford takes a 2-0 lead. Next batter, Cody Huff. Oh. Tanner O'Tremble bobbles it. And it was just enough for Jones to come around and score. Now Stanford's up 3-0 in the third. Later on in the inning. You're noticing a trend here, two on, two out. Drew Bowser. Oh. Super Mario and Luigi can't stop him. Stanford leads 5-0. Next batter, Tommy oh. Troy. Bye. Stanford scores seven runs in the third inning. They take a 7-0 lead into the seventh we would go. Now Stanford's up 11-5. Jones, a little bit more. <laughs> you jonesing for more offense? I got you, boo. Stanford just absolutely lays it on with a football score, 14-5 or more. Let's get it over to Ravi. What an atmosphere for that kid. Jack Leiter signing autographs on his way to the ballpark where he will pitch in Omaha and the College World Series for the first time. May not be the last time if Vanderbilt can move on. This is the fork in the road game. You got to take the easy road or the more difficult road through the loser's bracket. Vanderbilt and NC State both won their first games. Welcome everyone alongside Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson. How valuable will a Jack Leiter autograph be down the road given where he's headed? He's, uh, he's been pretty good at baseball this year, gentlemen. And when he's gone out there, it just seems like he learns and gets better every time. How about first ever SEC start? He didn't pitch a conference game last year with a shortened season. All he did in his first career SEC start, throw no hitter. Yep. He punch out 16. And when he punched out 16, all 16 were on the fastball. It's an explosive fastball. Should be up to 98, 99 miles an hour when it's right. A swing and miss curveball. And there is a reason, and a very good reason. But Jack Leiter's expected to go in the top five of the MLB draft. See it right there, the number three draft prospect. For Vanderbilt, they survived. Kumar Rocker did not pitch really well in the first game for Vanderbilt, but they did win an extra innings. Rocker will be sixth, according to our Kylie McDaniel, as far as the draft prospects that are on these College World Series rosters. And all Will Bednar did last night was strike out 15 guys. Leiter's total will get high as well. And then there's NC State, who didn't host a regional, then they went to Arkansas and knocked off the one, number one overall seed, and now they have to deal with the best pitcher that's here. And they're not playing at home, which is a good thing. It's a neutral site. Maybe advantage North Carolina State because of this guy. The Butler did it. It's Johnny Butler, and Saturday, not only did he hit a home run, but he drove in five, and the reason he drives in five is because he has a lot of guys in front of him that get on base at a high on base percentage. Focuses when runners are in scoring position, the Butler, the real deal. So Eddie's predicting the Butler with the bat at TD Ameritrade, where it is 75 degrees and the wind is blowing out again. Are we in Omaha? Is this for real? Picture postcard night, and we are looking forward to watching Vanderbilt and NC State, the College World Series. All right, you just heard the fellas talking about him. There he is, Jack Leiter. He's getting ready. He looks focused. He's getting that wrist work. Let's go. Seven minutes and 20 seconds or so away from Vanderbilt at NC State College World Series action. And so much more. Stick around. Thank you. Welcome to Omaha, where folks are lining up to get in tonight. And what a show they expect to see from one of the great pitchers in college baseball. Can throw strikes out there. The Wolfpack fans already. What a turnaround of their season. And tonight they get the biggest challenge of all. Jack Leiter and the Vanderbilt Commodores here at TD Ameritrade. They are flipping out for tonight's game. And we welcome you to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Javier Vaz, very flexible. And earlier today, so are the Stanford Cardinal. My goodness, did they take care of Arizona. Arizona didn't expect to be leaving so soon. They had the best offense. In the field, they hadn't lost two games back-to-back -back since mid-April. Stanford, Brock Jones, home run. In fact, they put a lot of runs on the board. Tommy Troy hit a home run. It was 10 to nothing on their way to a 14-5 final. Arizona exit stage left. Stanford will take on the loser of tonight's game. That's the fork in the road game. You either go 2-0 and and take the easy road, or you are 1-1 one and, one and make life a little more difficult. That's Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, Chris Budden in just a minute. I'm Carl Ravitch. 
Leiter was signing autographs before the game. Like, how valuable is a Jack Leiter autograph going to be down the road? Because he is special. Yeah, it seems like it's it's getting to be more valuable every week. And the kid hasn't been, even been drafted yet. And this will be the first time that we see him on this stage. How about the first time that we saw him on the SEC stage this year? Pretty good start. Remember, he didn't have any conference starts last year. First ever SEC start. No hitter against South Carolina. Punched out 16, all 16 on a fastball that should get into the mid-90s tonight. 10-3, the 2-1-6, 156 strikeouts. That's second in the country only to his teammate, Kamar Rocker. And the arsenal is, well, it's as good as you're going to see in the entire country. Mid to upper 90s, a swing and miss, break a ball, and a kid that really understands his craft. It is the kitchen sink. You see where he is, the number three draft prospect. His buddy Rocker, who actually didn't get the win the other night, is six on that list. NC State doesn't care who they're facing. They started off 1-8, and eight, and man, have they turned it around. They really have, and this is a team that does not mind playing on the road. Well, this time they're playing on a neutral site, but they've gone through the gauntlet. They went out to Ruston, Louisiana, and they kicked some butt there. First it was Bama, and then Louisiana Tech. They had to beat them twice. They were able to do that. They go to Fayetteville, they take care of business. Losing the first game, showing character, winning the next two. This is a team that understands how to win. They come in, beat Stanford in game one here in Omaha. This is a team, again, if you have a leader, like the number three hole hitter, and that's Johnny Butler. Right in the middle of things, five RBI in the first game, setting an NC State College World Series record. Johnny Butler is the epicenter of their offense. Last time Vanderbilt played here in 2019, they were crowned champions. We'll talk with Chris Budden when we come back about the journey for Elliott Avent. Long-term care product. It protects your family while providing long-term care coverage should you need it. Talk to your advisor, Bright House Financial. Build for what's ahead. The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Father's Day yesterday, Elliot Avent buffered by all the small children of his coaching staff. It helped him a lot, didn't it, Chris? Yeah, because yesterday was the first Father's Day that he spent without his father, Jack, who passed away at the beginning of the season. Jack was 93 years old, and Elliot called him his best friend. He was also a constant figure around the NC State baseball program. When I lost my daddy, um, June 30th, it just, uh, that was a rough patch for a long time for me. He rode on most of the bus trips. He roomed with me. Sometimes I'd be laying in bed working on things and he'd be in a chair working on stuff. And I'd be like, Daddy, what are you working on? He said nothing. And then after he went to bed, I'd go over and look at it. And he was working on guessing the starting lineup for the next day, who was going to be in the lineup. He loved life. He loved people. There's not a day goes by that most of the day I think about my daddy. After he passed, Elliot was going through his father's things and found this keychain in his drawer with the 2013 World Series logo on it with the quote, he will always be with you, a Bible quote that he now keeps with him everywhere. Coach would joke that he was good cop, bad cop, that when coach would get on somebody, they'd be on the bus ride, and Dad Jack would go up to him and say, it's okay, keep your head up. Just a, a sneak peek into the close relationship between dad and son. Yeah, bonded by baseball, too. Big Yankees fans, they would always debate who was better, Mantle or DiMaggio. So they have a wonderful relationship, and he's with them now. 13 was the last time they were here, and this kid... Wasn't part of that program for sure. He was still a little boy. Sam Highfield's going to be on the mound. Man, he's had a really good year, 8-2 and two with a sub-4 ERA. Think about the NC State offense that in the last two games has beaten Kevin Copps and Brendan Beck, two of the better pitchers tonight. They deal with lighter. As we take a look at our batting order, it's brought to you by Capital One. Enrique Bradfield was on a lot in that last 12 inning game and didn't take advantage of his speed. He's stolen 46 bases this year. It's Carter Young had a big home run in that game. Dominic Keegan, Troy Leneve, Isaiah Thomas, Parker Nolan at second base. The catcher, C.J. Rodriguez, and Javier Vaz as we get set for the first one tonight. Winner goes 2-0. and And it's a fastball. It's right down the middle. Strike one at 93.
That's off the plate. What a year Bradfield had as a freshman 6'1 160 out of Hialeah Florida. The first SEC freshman of the year for Vanderbilt since 2011. Pushes a bunt and it is right on that line. It's fielded. Oh, what a play to start. Wojtek Menchik. It's one of those, do I let it roll and roll and roll? He said, I got to grab it. And he threw out one of the quickest guys in college baseball. First thing you think of, foul ball base hit. Bradfield, perfect butt right here, down the line. Watch the angle right here that Menchik takes. Beautifully done, throwing off the right foot. Perfect strike over to first base to Dominic. Again, just making a beautiful play. Rosier right at the target. What a play to start. Keeps Bradfield off the bases. And Menchik out of the Czech Republic. Here's Carter Young. Breaking pitch looks good from Sam Heifel. Who in 15 games this year with an 8 and 2 mark. That's 86 innings, 75 hits, 38 earned runs. He struck out 77, walked only 24. Coming off a good one, too, when they needed him six and a third against Arkansas in the elimination game a day after Arkansas beat NC State 21 to 2 in the first game of that super. Highfield got the win. Give up three earned runs and six and a third to keep the season alive. Young, that is to first and a tricky hop, but two good plays by that NC State defense. Austin Murr. Yeah, that's Bradfield after he was thrown out. A little gimpy on that leg of his. An unbelievable bunt. That was going to stay fair, and Menchik. A bare hand play at third to get things going tonight. If Bradfield gets a bunt down the third baseline, <laughs> you don't throw him out. It doesn't happen. In situations like that, Menchik made one whale of a play to start this thing. Here's Dominic Keegan, and this one into center field. It's going to get down. The first hit of the night comes from the first baseman, Dominic Keegan, out of Methuen, Massachusetts. Had a rough time in the field. In the first game for Vanderbilt over at first base, a couple of balls bounced up and off his chest. Vanderbilt survived that game. They made three errors and one in 12. In that victory against Arizona, nine players had at least a hit. Six different guys scored. They used three relievers, the three M boys, Maldonado, Murphy, McIlvain, who went six and a third and gave up just one run. More than just rocker and lighter to this club, here is Laniv. Fastball misses. Two guys late in the season became fixtures. Troy Laniv, the DH, and Javier Vaz, the left fielder. They dealt with some injuries both to position players and pitchers. And the left-handed bats have solidified the offense. It's a change up down, and it's 2-0. It's Javier Vaz right there. Six homers, 22 runs batted in for Leneve, six foot, 210 pounder. That's a good pitch, two balls and a strike. You want to make a 2 0 pitch on a cleanup hitter, that's exactly what you want to do. Just hit that spot outside corner, challenge him to go the other way with it. Highfields throwing 10 pitches. Here's number 11 on a 2-1. And he rolls it over to the second baseman. That's JT Jarrett. Not a problem. Good inning for Highfield. He gives up just a hit. And we'll see this NC State Wolfpack offense for the first time tonight when we come back. I think the number one thing that they've said is, yes, it's a big moment. But don't make a bigger deal of it than it really is. And Walker Bueller, he kind of had a message to the team. He said, adrenaline is like Vanderbilt steroid sometimes because you can really use the adrenaline of a high leverage game, high leverage situation to your advantage and kind of elevate your game. You could tap into such a vast amount of resource when it comes to major league pitchers that pitched at Vanderbilt. 
including Walker Bueller and Sonny Gray and David Bryce. And the list goes on and on. And now the next great one here is Jack Leiter. An incredible season, 10 and 3, and he, he throws more than just two pitches or three pitches. Yeah, we could see four tonight. Two different breaking balls, a curveball and a slider, a fastball that's been to upper 90s, and a changeup that is continuing to get better. The fastball's electric. It's as good a fastball as I've seen at the collegiate level. And when it's right, it's that high spin fastball that's up in the zone as Dad Al looks on with his scorebook always when Jack is pitching. I love it. Get the three sisters that are here Lindsay, Carly, Caitlin, Mom Lori somewhere as well. As Al said, man, this is the gift that just keeps on giving. What an experience. And tonight, for the first time here in Omaha at the College World Series, Austin Murr leads off. And there is a fastball at 92 over for strike one. Pretty veteran team that Elliott Avan has. Two hits against Stanford for Murr. Cut. And 0 and 2. He was joking the other day. I got nine guys. That whoever's the tenth guy on my team, unfortunately, not going to see a lot of action. He has used the same lineup forever. Oh. First breaking pitch is too close. It's a ball and a strike. Two strikes. A modified shift on here for Tim Corbin and his defense. Carter Young is still on the shortstop side of second, but they expect a pull on a one-two. Will not offer it that. I'll take it. It's a really good take right there. The clouds have been a factor early on. Why? Because at this time, it's when the shades play a big part of this ballpark. 2-2 two -two to the leadoff hitter. Outside. Just outside, 3-2. and two. It's a good call. Billy Van Raphorst is our home plate umpire tonight. And after starting 0-2, count full. That's off. This is a North Carolina state lineup amongst the most prolific home run hitting teams in the country. 91 home runs on the season, a 289 batting average. They are terrific with runners on and bases loaded situations. And Murr's got seven homers. 3 2, and he got him. Strikeout number one for Jack Leiter. Went with the heater, and he got him. It is now time to take a look at our batting order. It's brought to you by Capital One. Harlan McDonough is the center fielder. Johnny Butler had the huge game in the first one. Darrell Tatum, the DH. Jose Torres is a superstar at shortstop. Luca Tresh, Devontae Brown, Wittek Menchik, who we saw make that unbelievable defensive play, and JT Jarrett, son of the Notre Dame head coach. First pitch to Tyler McDonough, the center fielder at 5'10", 180 out of Liberty Township, Ohio, off the plate. He did. Called strike on the swing, and C.J. Rodriguez can't find the baseball right next to his right foot. McDonough and Tresh in the lineup both have 15 home runs. Gonzalez right in on the edge of the grass at third base. Middle infield deep in the grass and he bounces one up there. It's two balls and a strike. Yep. There was a week off they gave for Leiter this season when it appeared as if he was perhaps just feeling the effects of a full season. Came against Alabama, he rebuilt the strength and confidence, and he has been lights out since then. This one to first. And that time, Dominic Keegan did what he didn't do in the first game. He backed up, and he let the ball take a favorable hop. The other night, he kind of got stuck and took two off the chest. Make the adjustment. Learn from your mistakes. Has a tendency of starting off in a squat position at first base, originally a catcher. That first step, taking it back, is the right one. And the best part about it, no one on base if you're Vandy against Johnny Butler, who's at the plate. 
385, 14 homers, and right at the knees for a called strike one, 93 miles an hour. Jack Leiter ready to go again. Gets the sign right down the middle. Up a few ticks to 95. KP, I want to see how he attacks him now. Last time he had leadoff hitter 0-2, went curveball, curveball in the dirt. See if he elevates right here. That's fouled back, and somebody in the luxury suite area will have a souvenir. Tried to. He didn't get it elevated quite as much as he wanted to right there. Fastball starting to tick up a little bit. Big man's got a I love that. We got a foul ball in the first inning. That's a good start to the night. You bring your glove, you get a ball. That's a W. Early W. Winning. There it is. That's ready for um, a curveball. Good possibility right here. Scott Brown, the great pitching coach for Vanderbilt, says if there's anything we try to encourage him, just slow it down a little bit. Oh. That's good early takes on that pitch. It started at the bottom part of the zone, went down and out of the zone. Murr had a good take or two on it. Butler did right there. Think about all the pitchers, and I mentioned a few of them. They all, by the way, don't have what Leiter does as a freshman. None of them brought to the Vanderbilt program what he brought. It's a maturity. It comes from growing up around ballparks, oh. being coached by a dad, a couple of uncles that went to the majors, and now we're full again. Both 3-2 counts started off 0-2. The takes are good, and they're real so far, KP. Yeah, and I think that's an approach. It's a good approach to take against Leiter. It's, it is a fair amount of walks. I mean, 41 walks in 96 innings this year. One of the aspects that we haven't talked too much about, but you're looking at Leiter now about to throw pitch number 20. They did. They did use their bullpen arms and the three good ones threw a lot of pitches a couple of nights ago. On a 3 2. Got him swinging. Lighter picks up strikeout number two and a good start. Put the pen in the mouth, give it a little clap, and exit stage left for Sis. 0 0 after one. Host City is not disappointed, welcoming the College World Series back after a year's absence. And for more coverage of the College World Series and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Host of the city, of course, Kyle Peterson. He hands out the keys to the city when people show up. I'll tell you one thing, you nailed the weather so far. My goodness. About keys to the city, so Adam Doliak sings that song. Yeah. College World Series alum, Southern Miss. 2011 was in town three or four weeks ago at a concert. My wife went, Sam and Bridget, my friends went. Threw the Southern Miss jersey on the middle of the middle of the concert. He He's still he threw Is Southern Miss right? jersey. He's still a huge college baseball fan. Yeah. One and one, Isaiah oh. Thomas has popped up. That is the Sun Field. Butler shading the eyes, and he finds the ball. And he's there to make the play. So you you, you mentioned a lot of folks that went. Were you doing a game on the yes. L, on the LFH? I, yep, I was in fact doing a game. Live from home. Yep. Got the updates from Julie, but was not there. <laughs> Well, I can tell you this, Kyle, I know I speak for everybody involved. We are delighted to have you here in person and to be back in person in this College World Series. 
like this view. Miss this view. This is as HD as it can get. Parker Nolan's the second baseman, 268, seven home runs on the year out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Sails away 2 0 from Sam Highfield. Kyle mentioned last week against Arkansas, six innings, three earned runs, but since the 21st of May, Highfield, four wins and an ERA of 225. When I'm talking to Elliot Avent about him today, he said he's probably been our most consistent the entire season. It's a fastball, low 90s. Could see some 93s, 94s potentially. The changeup is the difference maker, especially with this lineup that has a fair amount of left handed hitters in it. He will use that changeup in any count. Yeah. Look at a little, what are those Neko wafers? I haven't seen those in forever. Pieces of candy there, two and two, and that's out of play. Bandy has gone two and zero oh in each of their three times that they have been here to reach the College World Series finals. And that, believe it or not, the other night was the first extra inning game since 2014. They had a play 12 of them. Another foul ball. And in that game in 2014, it was Vanderbilt again. They beat Texas that year, 4-3 and 10. On their way to a World Series championship, 14 and 19. Virginia's 1 0. They won it in 2015. They'll be on the field tomorrow. Two and two. Oh. He spoils another one. Tell you what, he's gone fastball, changeup combination so far in this at bat, and that one throwing it in, glove side, finally being able to get it there. Speeds the bat up now. Don't be surprised right here. The good nasty changeup follows that fastball in. Overthrew it. The offensive hero for Vanderbilt in their win the other night was Jason Gonzalez. He's the third baseman and he bats ninth. Carter Young had a big home run, but 99 was the hero with a seeing eye single in the 12th. And another souvenir were firing through baseballs early in this one. There we go. Field straight up for the left hander three and two and he chased one strikeout number one for Sam Highfield tonight. It kind of felt like so he's fastball in change up away fastball away change up away. I mean just pounding the zone time after time that Nolan so you see in strikes right here that he goes after one that's out of the zone elevated fastball which you won't see Highfield do nearly as much as you'll see lighter do he'll work the bottom of the zone just a little bit more but Nolan couldn't hold up their first strike out of the night. But that's the first thing they tell you. The approach that you want against Highfield and that's go in and look and make him throw the pitch up right. and when you make him throw the pitch up you're going to, you're going to chase out of the zone up. And the reason they want you to make him bring it up is because of the change up. Down. Now, and this is it's one and one to C.J. Rodriguez the catcher. So while it's 75 degrees tonight Highfield in that game against Arkansas temperatures were in the hundreds the heat index was at triple digits he did retire at one point 16 in a row and that's against an Arkansas offense in Fayetteville and he's capable of putting zeros up against the best Kind of guy you want going to the mound. They've won nine straight when he's on the bump. He's now away from getting through the second. That's a good pitch on the corner, two and two. Come on, 
it's foul, it's foul. Here you go. Guys, get your head around what we saw last night with uh, the record setting strikeout performance from Bednar and his buddy. They did. And I'll tell you this, they were nasty. <laughs> I would say the spin rate must have been very darn good, but most importantly, the hitters really did not make much of an adjustment. Well, Bednar struck out 15 for Mississippi State. Oh. A little sidearm delivery here, and the race to first is going to be won by Austin Murr. Sam Highfill going Sam Lowfill right there. So far, so good. NC State Wolfpack have this guy, Jose Torres, right in the middle of everything, and he was the reason they got to Omaha. Ninth inning, home run off Kevin Copps, who has been the more dominant pitcher with Leiter, Rocker, and anybody else in the country. And after he threw a lot of pitches, it was a home run from Jose Torres. Shocked everybody. And he's got his club here, and he is the guy that makes this team go. With all due respect to the Johnny Butlers of the world, it's Jose Torres. As impressive a guy off the field as he is on it. And he'll bat second behind Terrell Tatum, the DH. Respecting his speed, Jason Gonzalez in there at third base. And later, after his first inning, which he struck out two, throws a first pitch strike. 11 home runs. Ball. We watched that home run by Jose Torres in Fayetteville, but it took some failure for that to happen. He was the last out in the ACC championship. And he said, I learned from that moment. My little league coach used to tell me, baseball is a game of failure. It's how you learn from it. So he thought of that exact moment when he hit that home run off of Cops in Fayetteville. Yep. This entire sport is based on that and your ability to compartmentalize. Last curveball was up a little bit, and that is strike three. So Leiter seemed to find that curveball, and then he goes fastball paint inside, strikeout number three. That's uncomfortable right there. When you get a fastball in like that, and he's able to execute glove side, hitting the mark, Rodriguez, watch where he just sticks it right there. That's tough. You're looking out over the plate because of the curveball. As a hitter, you're locked up. Hats off to Leiter. Now here is Torres. Fastball right by him, 90 miles an hour. Fastball's down a few ticks tonight. I mean, a lot of times you see Ladder, he'll sit 94, 97 for the entire time out there. Today's been 90, 93 so far. It's effective. They yeah. haven't done anything with it. Of course, then he shows you 194. <laughs> with movement. With probably some be 96. serious movement. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, guy that's talking. Don't say that anymore. Remember, you're not at home anymore, and he can hear you. No LFH. <laughs> oh. That's what he does right there. Elevates that fastball to see if you chase. Now your eyes are looking up. He's done it already to two hitters. After the high fastball, when he's ahead, he goes to the curveball down. Shaking off. He has struck out three of the first four. And the one, two. That's another one. Jose Torres looking. Lighter four strikeouts. The slider right here. So we see more curveballs, and it'll show you both. That was the fastball elevated. And he comes back with a slider right here. That last slider freezes Torres. Both looking. Fastball in on the hands of Tatum. The slider right there for Torres. Jack Leiter struck out for the first five. And here's Luca Tresh. He's the catcher. It's amazing how that curveball and that slider just look different this inning. First inning spiking quite a few of them. Now up a little bit, still down in the zone and getting strike calls. Again, 0 2 count. A guy like this, you have to be aggressive early in the counts. He's got too much in his back pocket the fastball, the curveball. We've seen the slider. Works on a cutter and a change. Mm, he strikes out the side and he has struck out five of the first six that he has seen underway through two at the College World Series. 
Capital One Cup is back, and this year Capital One has doubled their student athlete scholarship fund donation to $800,000 in student athlete scholarships split between the top five Division I men's and women's athletics programs. To see where your school ranks, visit CapitalOneCup.com. TD Ameritrade been hosting this thing since 2011, and here we are with Vanderbilt and NC State in the top of the third. Both of these teams win their first game. You win tonight, you don't play again until Friday, and if you win Friday, you move into the College World Series Finals. This one hard on the ground, and look at how smooth Jose Torres is as he picks it up and fires to get Javier Vaz. Hit right at him, just shuffles his feet, works that easy bounce. Not only does he throw it, but he follows that throw right over to first base. Boston Moore. So the number nine hitter is Jason Gonzalez. And you got to respect this guy. He's got eight home runs. Big kid at 6'2", 220. California. And the first pitch he looks at is a strike. You're good. I have hit him here. Jack Ladder, five strikeouts through two. He is now up to 161 on the year. His next one will tie him with Rocker, his teammate, and Virginia's Andrew Abbott for the Division I lead. Mm. Get those arms extended, and that's going to go foul, but it was long. That's where he can get you, too. But as much of Gonzalez's power is to right center as it is anywhere else in the field. We saw two nights ago with that right center blast, the pitch that was actually middle in. He was able to bring his hands in strong enough to hit it that way. Hector! Oh, he gets the call, strike three, and Gonzalez is gone. That's strikeout number two for Sam Highfill. Talking about the changeup of Highfill, this is the breaking ball, though. Get around the slider right there. Holds its line just enough for Luca Trash to. Frame it up, second strikeout, that one on the slider. One time through the lineup has allowed just a single, a two out single to Keegan in the first. That's it, only hit of the game. Enrique Bradfield looked, thought he had a hit. He laid down an ideal bunt. And a third baseman, Wojtek Menchik, who is in considerably, anticipating perhaps another one, made a great play. I think that's the key word, anticipation. You have to be able to do that if you're a third baseman. You're playing in like that. You're challenging the best of bunters that go ahead. I challenge you to be able to get it by dead in the baseball. So far, Menchik up one nothing on Bradfield. Held up two and one. Bradfield is a weapon when he's on the bases. And that's fouled. You wonder how a kid from the Czech Republic ends up at NC State. So Menchik was playing with an international team, a Pro 5 was the name of it. And during COVID, Elliot Avent and company were like, we're looking for teams to play. She couldn't play anybody, so they found this international team. And there were actually a couple of kids from the Czech Republic that he liked, both of whom he had. One left because he wasn't playing, but Menchik stays. And Bradfield sends this to left, coming hard, making a nice play, is Johnny Butler. Bradfield retired on two balls, you thought, may very well have ended up as hits. NC State looking for its first when we come back. Scoreless in Omaha. Jack Ladders punched out five of the first six. Watch how he tunnels. So breaking ball, fastball, both look the same out of his hand. Now we're going to flip it. Fastball, breaking ball. Last one to slider, both. Starting the exact same spot, elevated fastball, and then this one to finish. And he has finished with everything so far. Fastball, slider, and the curveball. Punched out five of the first six, three swinging. Two looking so far for Lider. Yeah, and four in a row. There's 
a Will Bednar feel to what's going on here tonight. We saw that last night. He struck out 15, 31 strikeouts total. And now Devontae Brown for the first time. 7 8 9 for NC State. Go 76, and we've seen 94 from the 21 year old lighter on a summit, New Jersey. And we just did. Again, another 0 2 count. The secret of all this is not only that he's landing the fastball, but also the number two. Curveball right there, get me over, gets ahead 0 1. Now you can go many places with this. Outside. Grow up the son of a major leaguer in a lot of clubhouses early. Of course, he played with Toronto, he played with the Mets, he played with the Yankees down in Florida as well. So that's off. I know Kyle, you had a chance to interview both the parents of Rocker and Leiter, and they didn't know that Jack was going to grow and become a pitcher. He was a real small, short little guy for a lot of years. Yeah, I mean, they showed pictures 12 and 13 year old team. Jack was the smallest one on the team, and it wasn't even close. Velocity wasn't there yet. This velocity came a little bit later. But what Alan talked about, and Lori Bull talked about, is is his interest in in just studying the game. And so when the arm strength came, um, the approach was already there. I mean, it helps that your pops pitched in the big league for 20 years. You went through this. You grew up around it. Just his understanding of the game is next level. Forget this 20 years old. And there you see where he is currently listed in the top prospects of the guys that are on these. World Series rosters. Menchik oh, pops sky high and they're pointing at Bradfield in center. And he is there to make the play. So that'll end the string of strikeouts. He got to five in a row, but he'll take a one pitch pop out. Now we see dad in the stands. He's always here watching and charting every game. I asked Jack, like, how much do they talk about baseball? He said, well, the great thing is, is he knows when I'm having a bad day, you got to leave me alone. We don't talk about it. We don't go over it. He goes, but there are times where I just want to go through a start and he'll sit there and go through each pitch with me, kind of understanding my mindset. Well, this is a hamburger helper inning for a lighter. A real quick one with a couple of pop outs. See, Stad likes that. All right, we just bought ourselves another inning. We are in good shape, yeah. Welcome back to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Responsible for the production tonight, Scott Johnson, the director, Scott Gustafson from the back bench, nailing it so far to the top of the fourth in a 0 0 game. Chris Budden, Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez. Carl Ravage. Outside. All want to start the fourth. It'll be Carter Young followed by Dominic Keegan and Troy Lenive. The only hit of the game off the bat of Dominic Keegan. 16 homers for Young, the shortstop. Oh That's a great changeup, and he's ahead of it. It's one and one. It's a big. Two run go ahead home run in the seventh inning against Arizona. They then tied it in the ninth and we ended in the twelfth. And Arizona losing today. They are done here in Omaha. Yep. Crossed them off the list. Stanford's offense showed up. Had them and Lubbock in their supers. They were great then and they were really strong today. Get to know the name Brock Jones. Yep. He's the center fielder for the Cardinal and he is impressive. Another three knocks today. Home run for Brock Jones. Three and one game against Texas Tech in the supers. Defense goes all shift right now. Three one count. They're respecting the pull ability here of Carter Young. Hey. Ball's outside. Watch the plate. Go out there and frame it, but that's not the one you want to swing at. 3 1. Sun peaks out again, will affect the outfielders if you can get there, but there is a leadoff walk. We'll see if that will come back to haunt Highfield and the Wolfpack. 
First leadoff hitter he allows on in the, of an inning. This is exactly the way Vanderbilt wants to see if they can put something on with the meat of the order coming up. The sun is going to be a factor right now in left field. And here's Dominic Keegan. Not a lot of guys left from that incredibly impressive World Series winning team from 2019. He played 17 games as a freshman. He's become a fixture in the middle of this Vanderbilt lineup this year. Batting average around 360. Three postseason appearances for Highfield against Georgia Tech, six and a third, one run. Louisiana Tech, five and a third, no runs. And he goes to that sidearm delivery, and now it's two and oh. Way lighter is started. Just know it feels like runs are going to be at a premium tonight. Push one or two across. NC State will be feeling it as long as that guy keeps throwing the way he's throwing. TK. Nobody out. So young look over to third base. That's where Tim Corbin is. He's the third base coach. Gives all the signs. Not going, and this ball is up in the air and towards the seats and now going to get into them. Eddie, you're in a game like this. You know the other team's pitcher is really good, and tonight he's pitching really well. What does that do to you defensively and even offensively? Well, defensively, I'll tell you this. Coach Elliott, if the runner is on third base less than two outs, he will play this infield in. He knows those, those runs are definitely at a, pre, a premium. Boy, good Pressure has to be on. And the, with what Leiter has been able to do so far in this game, eight out of the nine hitters that he has faced, he's got him ahead already 0-1. He's got his game going. Leadoff man aboard in the 0 0 game in the fourth for Dominic Keegan. Hey! Hey! Kyle, you were that guy, too, that the other team had to deal with in college. Like, Kyle's going to pitch great. So, but you also had to do that against other great pitchers. So, what was your mindset? If you're high field, what's your mindset? I mean, listen, I, th I think that. It's not easy to do, but I, I think you got to take away a little bit who's on the other side on the mound just because you, you can't do anything about it. Now you go into it knowing two may be enough today uh -huh. for whatever side that that is. So that part of it comes back into play, but it just makes you lock in a little bit more. The third time he's gone down to that arm angle, he's shown you a few different pitches. That time goes to slider. Keegan can't hold up. Third strike out of the game for Highfield. All right, here's Troy Leneve, the DH. He was inserted into the lineup back in May, the series against Alabama. That was the series lighter took off. Since then, 17 games, 16 RBIs, and he didn't know what to do with that pitch. Strike. Five home runs in those 17 games. Elfield respects the power of the Big left hander who stands six feet, 210. Young has nine steals. He's not going there, and that's high. One and one.
Outside. He's been going to the 2 0 changeup when he falls behind right here, 2 1. Hasn't been able to land it consistently. See what he does. up playable but let's remember the sun here they're pointing to Butler and left seems to have a beat on it he makes the play for out number two went sunglasses down I know you were talking with Elliot Avent today maybe we just kind of flip them down once we find out where the ball is yeah and again those high fly balls right now those are pretty easy to see that's above the sun in, from his angle it's the line drive that left fielders here have an issue with traditionally because of the shadows and when it's a line drive exit velocity is a little higher and you can't really tell the depth perception of the ball especially when it's right in those right in the sun that's been there for years. Yeah it's been around for a while. Yeah, it's been around. <laughs> Sneaky that son. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas rolls one over it's fielded at third. Yes he could have gone a second but Menchik's have it himself a game. We got a good game here. 0-0. Zero, zero. Bottom four, Elliot Avent will join us when we come back. Zero, 0 bottom four, Elliot Avent. Loves this part of the night when he can get that headset working well and he can communicate with us up here. Got in the booth. It. There you go. Elliot, what do you make of this game so far? You buckled in? Yeah, you better be buckled in. I'll tell you, it's a good pitcher's duel, and uh, Leiter is really keeping us off, keeping us off balance. Uh, he's throwing a lot more breaking balls than we expected, probably 40% breaking balls, and we know he's got elite stuff, but when he has this kind of command, it makes it awfully tough. Coach, that infield of yours is pretty solid all season long. What have you seen from them, especially with the play at third base? Yeah, that play void to me was unbelievable. Great bunt. I wanted it to go foul. He picked it up. I said, oh, boy, and what a play that was. <laughs> all right, Elliot, thanks very much. And the system worked well tonight. We appreciate it. <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks, Carl. Thanks, Vaughn. <laughs> Poor Elliot Avent tried to do this once before, and the headset was a little jumbled and didn't get a chance to hear him. But tonight... All systems go. Good man. Yes, he is. <laughs> Top of the order for Leiter in the fourth. Austin Murr gets the call down. Strike number one. Six strikeouts, no hits for Leiter so far. Square to bunt, and that's going to go foul. He had a great idea there. They had a shift on. It was only Jason Gonzalez. He had no chance if he was able to keep that no, fair. And I, I, I love that approach right there from Murray. Um, I mean, NC State hadn't had a base runner on all day. You got your leadoff man up to start here the fourth inning. He was taking a chance, maybe trying to be a little bit, a little bit too fine right there, because if you just get it down that way, it's a base hit. Now 0 2. It's interesting. So Elliot said, I think he's throwing more curveballs than we expected. So that's the game plan that they assumed that Vanderbilt would have going in. Like he's going to just throw fastballs or more of them than, than that pitch right there for strikeout seven. What does that mean when he says that? Well, I mean, it's just a scouting report coming in. You look at tendencies over the course of the season and what Jack Leiter has thrown, and he throws a lot of fastballs because the fastball is, is usually elite. It's been very good today. Velocity hasn't been what we've seen his top be this year, but the curveball's been great, and he's throwing a ton of strikes. I mean, look at that. First pitch strikes to 9 out of, nine out of 10, and Eddie, you were talking about it. It, it. it seemed for a while there he was going 0-2 on four or five guys in a row. That's That's the pitch right there. That's a difference maker. So far, when he has been able to start with the curveball for a strike 0 1, he comes right back at you with the fastball up in the zone. Let's see how he approaches it now with the second time around the lineup. And he changes it up. The unpredictability of Jack Leiter 
knowing that he has elite curveball and fastball, and the way he knows how to set up hitters is the difference maker. 7 0 2 counts on the first 11 batters. 7 0 2 counts. And he's got seven strikeouts. Of course, his dad, Al, major leaguer. Al's brothers, Mark and Kurt. Mark's son, Mark Jr., all major league roots. And a 1 2, and that's foul. Al was taken in the second round by the Yankees back in the 84 draft. He's got some World Series rings, three of them, two All Star teams, a 19 year career. And a couple incredibly memorable postseason games. And for one, two, that's down two balls, two strikes. All right, he writes it down now. Now watch him. He'll he'll start talking to his daughter, predicting what pitch he should be throwing right now. Only thing this one has not seen is a fastball hard in. Strikeout number eight for Jack Leiter. It's elite stuff. Again, going with the heater. He can beat you late in counts with the number one. He can elevate it. He can locate it away. Or he can do this right here. I'm coming in. I'm coming to your house. And I'm having some breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> then I'm going to lay down on the couch. Stop me. I ain't leaving. I've been watching Ben too much. <laughs> Wonder about the dynamic too between the coaching staff and a major league pitcher who obviously is so close to his son. How much input does he have? Are they willing to listen to anything? Oh, and two. I thought it was, it was interesting to hear Scott Brown talk about that. The pitching coach of Vanderbilt the other day, and, and his comment was, you know, we, we don't usually allow a lot of input input from parents from a baseball standpoint. This one's obviously a little bit different situation. And there's been more of that, especially because Val's understanding of his son, his son's stuff, and what they got done over the COVID break. Yeah. I mean, he was back throwing live bullpens and, and working on different pitches, trying to add a cutter, trying to make the slider better. And you've got as good of, of set of eyes from a pitching coach standpoint in college baseball and Scott Brown and a dad that played for 20 years in the big leagues. That's a pretty good duo right there. And they said as long as the message is consistent we're in great shape and right now he's in great shape. Jack Leiter threw four innings nine strikeouts. Give me some knuckles. I called that pitch too. Both lighters are on rolls. No hits nine strikeouts already a no hitter to his name. By the way dad 19 year major league career at C.A. R E E R threw a no hitter in his eighth start for the Marlins back in 96 and lo and behold son Jack did in his eighth career start showed you that as he broke into the SEC play they have other things in common they don't have the World Series rings and Jack throws from the right side while Al threw from the left think back you guys remember the 2000 World Series game five Mets Yankees remember how many pitches he threw at eight and two thirds I remember standing at his locker room after the game. 142 pitches. <laughs> he was toast. A heroic effort in a game that Andy Pettit and the Yankees ended up winning, but 142 pitches. I don't think Jack's going to throw that many no. tonight. <laughs> Just going to go out on a limb. Sam Highfield has been outstanding as well. He has not given up anything, and he is pouring strikes in. Only one hit in this game. Came from Dominic Keegan in the first inning. And other than that, if you're looking for offense, you got to find another ballpark. I feel has been great. And as a matter of fact, in the last couple innings, he's starting to find that changeup. Been throwing it when he's behind in counts. And his, his control of everything so far, and it's it's been high filled the entire season, but he has lived up to it today. 
That's high. You know, we're in the fifth inning already. Let's not forget, too, what has made NC State so good is guys like Evan Justice, who closes, Chris Villeman, who is available and crazy good out of the bullpen, and Matt Willitson, who's also in the bullpen. They have some power arms after Highfield. Look out. Luca Tresh showing some ability to get out of the crouch to catch that ball. Justice was a starter. They moved him at the end of March. 12 saves. And a 2 2. That's better. A changeup. Strikeout number four. He's kind of had that one on autopilot tonight, but he's really had the fastball on autopilot. How about glove side? We'll stick at glove side. Have I feel shown the ability to do it now arm side against the lefty. Got a little bit of arm side run, not much. It pretty much stays where he starts it, but the ability to control fastball on both sides of the plate and then that one. Throw the change up down and away. It looks like a strike. Everything going away from the left handed barrel. I feel has been on point tonight. Just one hit allowed two base runners total. C.J. Rodriguez. Popped up right side. And now coming in Devontae Brown. Can of corn for the right fielder. And there are two down here in the fifth. Two of the power conferences in college baseball. Avent has been at NC State. For a long time, and of course, Vanderbilt in the SEC. Arkansas was the overall number one seed, and we haven't seen the overall number one seed win a college World Series in what feels like forever. Was it Miami? Uh, 99. 99. 99. So, as great as it is to win the SEC, and hard for the overall one to win it all. Outside. One ball, one strike to Javier Vaz. And here's a good look at Jason Gonzalez. He's on deck. And he's going to get a chance to bat. Now Vaz is going to run. It's cut off out there, and he puts the brakes on smartly. Nice play by Brown and right. Tell you this, you have to appreciate what Brown did right here. Vaz is thinking two all the way. He's a speedster. He's got two outs. Think two all the way, and then Brown just does a 360. Gets rid of the ball in a hurry. And Vaz has to stop. He's his own coach. Nobody's telling him to stop or not. He sees the throw. He appreciates it, and he stays at first base. And here's Jason Gonzalez. Again, the hitting hero from game one for Vanderbilt. Home run, had a big walk late in that game. And then the game winning hit. Wind is blowing from left field to right field tonight. And it's a cool night here in Omaha. He's been pitching him away. In the first at bat and now in this at bat right here. Outfield and center field. Tyler McDonald playing just a tad too shallow with two outs and a runner at first. He had a big lead and he's able to get that right hand back, but he was he was off first base. He's got just a couple of steals on the season, but that's as large a lead as we've seen. But perfectly executed though to the back of the bag right there. It's what you want to do with base stealers. Uh -oh. Ooh, real close, close, and you can see Mercy check that. Got him, got him in the air. Yeah, got him in the air, but watch again. 
Slides to the back of the bag. I think he's safe from this angle. He's in there. If he slides to the middle of the bag, he's out. Great look. Job in there. Here to catch the back of the bag, but Murray's done enough convincing of Elliot Avent that they will take a look at it. It's one of the common mistakes that you make as a base dealer. Not yet. If he clipped his nails today, he's out. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you can overturn it. I mean, no, I, you can't. I think if he was safe, he stays safe. If he was out, he stays out. It looked that close when he was going back. But you can't tell when the dust starts flying where exactly when that hand is on the base. But that actually teaches them a lesson right there of when you're taking your lead, you cannot. He was entirely take, airborne. He was airborne completely. Yeah. You have to walk and slide. While you're doing that, that way you can easily then get back to the bag and not be caught off balance in the air. No, back in my base stealing days, Eddie, that's exactly what I was thinking too when I was leading off. I was not going to go airborne <laughs> on my lead. Valuable lesson you learned. Like, how high did you get when you would get airborne? I mean, sometimes it was a game. I just don't want to see how high I could get. Just try to <laughs> coax a throw over there sometimes. <laughs> you weren't fast at all, ever? No. Not even covering first on a ground ball to first? No. No, I wasn't. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> My speed left me pretty quick. So Vaz will start to drift off of first. He came up with the second hit of the game, and it's a 1-1 count to Jason Gonzalez. He goes sidearm, and that's a ground ball right to Torres, and an easy underhand flip to JT Jarrett. Tim Corbin, head coach of Vanderbilt. He'll join us when we come back. Talk about lighter and all things Vandy right after this. No hits for NC State. Vanderbilt has two, but there's no runs on the board, and Tim Corbin joins us now. Coach, we can talk about lighter, but I'd rather focus on your offense here. You haven't been able to generate anything against Highfield. He's been really good. What would you like to see your offense do? Well, it's strike the ball early. I mean, he's getting the count, so he's making it difficult on us Then been able to mix and dump the breaking ball in there. So um, we're just going to have to get some base runners some way, somehow. Corpse, ja obviously Jack's first start in this environment. What have you seen so far? Good. I mean, good poise, composure, getting ahead himself. I mean, he's attacking the zone, and that, that's the key to it. All right, Corpse, thanks very much. We appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. College World Series championships in 14 and 19 for Tim Corbin, 19th year at Vanderbilt, and their fifth College World Series appearance in their last 10 years. Story of the night is right there. Jack Letter. He struck out the side in the fourth. He's got nine strikeouts, and he has lived ahead. 802 counts on the 12 guys he has faced. And he's used that curveball to get strike one a lot. That ball is hammered to right field. That is a home run and a huge bat flip from Terrell Tatum. His 12th of the year. The pack strike first. Their first hit, a home run. All it takes is one swing of the bat. They know one thing. Jack Leiter's been around the plate. He's been 0-1, 0-2 a lot. Tries to sneak a fastball by Tatum, and Tatum said, nah, -uh, not here. That bat is flipped, and that's the 13th home run allowed by Jack Leiter this season. The good ones give him up with no one on base. Epic bat flip from Tatum. And it's NC State one hit, one run. They lead it one nothing and ball one to Jose Torres. 
junior out of Collierville, Tennessee. Pounded that thing to right. Six guys in the NC State lineup with double digit home runs this year. The middle of this lineup, you go two, three, four, five, six, seven, everybody with double digit home runs. That one just about ended up on a concourse. It was mashed. There. And that's the thing with Leiter this year, right? Coming into this, he'd given up 41, coming into this inning, 41 hits in 100 innings this year. But now 13 home runs. Comes back and gets another punch out. Tenth of the game, and for Tatum, that had to feel good. He had been 0 for 6 in this series with four strikeouts, and he hadn't hit a home run since May 22nd. So he had gone 11 games without one. Boy, did that feel good for Terrell Tatum. One down, Luca Tresh, another guy that has that pop 15 home runs. Outside. And that was loud. Tresh has a cousin Tom Tresh was his name major league fans may remember him from the 60s as this one is set back over our heads Tom Tresh hit 153 home runs when he played for the Yankees and Tigers from 61 to 69 four years of at least 20 bombs and he was the 1962 rookie of the year that's hit hard but on a line that's caught by Young it's short for the second out. Devontae Brown's defense held Javier Vaz to a single last inning, and now he's up. And that first pitch curveball didn't curve, and it's 1-0. Oh. I thought what Corp said about Elliott Aben's team was interesting, too. He said, uh, you know, A, they're 19-4 and four away from home. And Elliott, even during the time where they started one and eight, he said he liked his team. He, he trusted them because of their veteran nature and their maturity. He kind of figured we were going to turn it around. And it was after a sweep at the hands of Louisville. They lost three games. The players came to him and said, we got it now. They just got swept. We got it now. And then they went on a roll. Yeah, they were right. Too. <laughs> and the other thing it was is there wasn't like a, a, you know, a bunch of wholesale changes. Kind of the team is the team. and. They thought the team would get hot. Eddie Terrell Tatum is hot. One swing's been enough. Yeah, he gets off the plate a bit right here. They try to sneak an 0-1 fastball by him. He bat flips this one. He knows it. NC State, the Wolfpack, they're on the board, and they lead going into the top half of the sixth inning, one nothing. Welcome back everyone the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One KP Eduardo Perez Carl Ravich up here Chris Budden down on the field and what a game we have tonight one nothing NC State Stanford has left the building and they will get the loser of this game Mississippi State and Virginia tomorrow night Texas and Tennessee that's an elimination game tomorrow on ESPNU at 2 Eastern time. 
Now we'll see if Vanderbilt has an answer as they bat in the sixth inning. It's the top of the order. Enrique Bradfield, Carter Young, and Dominic Keegan. Sam Heifel's been terrific. And the third baseman, Menchik, is way in at third. Oh. Nice dig. Given his speed, Bradfield's one of those guys, too. If he were inclined, you could also drag a bunt to first and run right past the first baseman if he came in. At the letters, gets the call. One ball, two strikes. This one down the line and right tailing towards the seats and it's going to get there. Bradfield got on top of one, but he hooked it. So again, think about NC State season. They were one and eight and then went on a massive roll. They have been outstanding late 20 and five in their last 25, 32 and nine in their last 41. And Elliott Avent's team has beaten more ranked teams than everybody except Arkansas. They get 17 wins against ranked teams. They know they belong here and they belong in a conversation for best in the country in spite of that start. Yeah, Carl, there wasn't this aha moment halfway through the season when they started to go on a run. It's a team that's always had a confidence. But then you go into Ruston, Louisiana, and you win at the Love Shack, and then you knock off the number one team in the country. That confidence just continues to build. And they told me two years ago, when they started 19-0, and they ended up not even making it out of a regional. So you can have a great start and fizzle out. Doesn't mean anything if you can't be here in Omaha. Sam Highfill, who's been fabulous, trying to keep the leadoff man, Bradfield, off the bases. And it looks like he'll be able to do it. If Butler can find it, he does. Highfield will keep Bradfield off the bases. Sam Highfield keeps rolling along here for NC State. Highfield, pretty straightforward approach right here. Throw strike one. Control really two pitches. We haven't seen that many breaking balls. It's been primarily fastball changeup tonight from Highfield. 12 and 19 first pitch strikes. But the difference maker is the confidence to throw the changeup in any count. If he's down to finish a guy off, he's done it in both spots. Strike number one to Carter Young. Strikeout and a great reaction from Luca Tresh behind home plate. Strikeout number five for Sam Highfield. Tuesday night, ESPN, focus on the NBA. 7 o'clock Eastern Time Sports Center with Stephen A. 7.30, NBA countdown, 8.30, NBA draft lottery, and then 9 o'clock tip-off for game one of the Western Conference Finals. The Suns up 1-0 over the Clippers. That's the NBA on ESPN on Tuesday starting at 7 Eastern Time. One home run, the difference in the game. Dominic Keegan singled and he struck out. Jose Torres making it look easy. And Sam Heifel owning the night, silencing the Commodores' bats. He's been great. Nebraska 
And there is your offensive star of the night, Terrell Tatum, a blast in the fifth inning. It's 1-0. That's their only hit of the game. It was a no-doubt home run deep into the seats in right. And Leiter's first pitch now in the bottom of the sixth, strike one. Wojtek Menchik, JT Jarrett, and then back to the top of the order. And this one to the seats in right, and that's what will end up. So the NC State crowd has let us know that they have a branch in Prague, which is another inroad into some of the players over there. It's a NC State University European Center for architecture students who live, learn, and immerse themselves in the area. We appreciate that from Marsha. He was playing on a travel team, and Elliot Avent said, that guy is good. He also pointed out to us, like, in the Czech Republic, they don't pay for education. And there's some maturity about him, but over here he's paying probably $30,000 to attend NC State. And hopefully be seen by enough folks to get himself a professional baseball contract. 2-2, shallow right, tough play, going back and over the shoulder, and he couldn't make the play was Dominic Keegan. The ball just outran him. He kept trying to chase it down and couldn't get there. Uh, wind's blown out a little bit towards right field and just continues to go out there. You see a lot of first basemen actually alligator on that one, but he did not. Just wasn't able to get him. Into the mitt. Nice play by Rodriguez and strike out 12 for Leiter. I mean, we've talked about it plenty today. It's just the approach is elevated fastball and a breaker ball right behind it. It's just not easy to get on top of it. NC State's hit two balls real hard today. One to right for the home run. The other, the line drive, the trash hit, the shortstop. Besides that, Jack Leiter's been outstanding and now has more strikeouts in a College World Series game than anybody in Vanderbilt history. There's some pretty decent <laughs> arms at Vanderbilt that have pitched here in Omaha. That's one of them. Sure is. This is JT Jarrett, the second baseman. He squares and he offered at it, so he's behind 0-2. Dad's the head man at Notre Dame. Notre Dame was awfully impressive this year and in their super regional. Never say die. Won't swing at that. Pitch right there, close take. You tell me at home, outside. It's off. It's off. It's exactly where you want to throw it. One, two. Outside. Billy Van Rappor, some played umpire on both of those. I mean, there would be plenty of days that both of those pitches would be called a strike. Now both miss, and JT. Jared has worked it to 3 2. Parker Nolan makes the play. So he hasn't played much because he's been banged up, but he's owned the Dodgers. Fernando Tatis and the Padres get set to take on LA, and he's in the lineup. Just good news for our buddy Jason Benetti, Tim Kirshen, and Jessica Mendoza. They'll have that game as soon as we are done. But Tatis in the lineup for the Padres. So stay tuned for that. You Darvish on the mound as well in that game against Leo Urias. Should be a good one. Should be. 
just happens to be every time he gets banged up and he comes back it seems to be like it's the Dodgers they're playing against. That's true and he hits home ah. runs. One ball one strike to Austin Murr. He struck out twice 326 average 16 doubles three triples. Try to get one in the gap here at cavernous TD Ameritrade. Balls down. It's the top tenor tonight, gentlemen. Top ten evening. Sweater weather in June when you go home tonight. Two two elevated left field Vaz now sees it and it goes into his glove wasn't an easy play. And where will Vanderbilt find offense. Highfield's been so good tonight for NC State. Welcome you back to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Just a couple of the sights and sounds that we have seen. Tennessee and Texas at 2 Eastern time. And how about that Virginia story? Jeff Michaels, the father of the hero on Sunday, oh, called himself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Logan Michaels hit his first home run of the season. Jeff, who was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer a couple years ago and is currently not showing any signs of the cancer, was here to see it. He was handed the ball and showed all sorts of emotion. It was an incredible wow. moment. And Virginia 1 0. How but about the interview after the game? Yeah. Both of them, right? Oh, the, it was unbelievable. The father and the son. Yeah, yeah it really was. Very composed for all that they've had to go through. It's pulled foul. It's amazing. You kind of trivialize the whole thing and you realize, like, the man had pancreatic cancer, which is one of the worst diagnoses you want, and able to send his son away to Virginia. He talked about it, Logan, when he left, how difficult it would be to be that far away from his dad dealing with what he was doing. His dad said, you got to go do it. It's the best thing for you. And here they were enjoying that moment. Amazing. That's a strikeout. Another one for Highfield, who is rolling here. Into the seventh, he picks up strikeout number six, and Vanderbilt has shown no signs of offense. It's been the changeup. It's been great. NC State head coach Elliot Avent will tell you he's very sentimental. He keeps a lot of gifts in the dugout. He has a briefcase. He has a folder from Jim Valvano. He also has a green rock that he keeps in his pocket every game. It was a gift from former soccer coach George Tarantini, his daughter. She gave it to him during the middle of the season. The idea was that it gives uplifting energy. So he started putting it in his pocket, and that's what NC State started going on this run. So he said, you know what? It was a gift to me. I'm keeping it as long as we keep winning. Well, if Highfield keeps pitching this way, there's a good chance that's going to happen. I think that's always the key, like, <laughs> as long as we keep winning. <laughs> it's... I love it. It's working. But if we stop winning, I'm not yeah. going to use it anymore. <laughs> We're going to something else. Next one from Sam Highfield. That's high and outside. I feel going a little Antonio Menendez from Wake Forest that throws from the side, then comes from the top, giving you different looks for a hitter. Third time around the line of just changing it up a little bit. Hitters do not look comfortable at all. How, how difficult is it to be able to throw from two different angles and do it effectively? Um, it's tough. I mean, it's, you know, I don't think he's going to hit as many spots from down there. It's like he's just trying to give him a different look. What's interesting is I don't think he's got to give him a different look. He's given up two hits so far. 
the look that he's given them, they have not looked comfortable at so far. Isaiah Thomas has gone back to back punch outs for Sam Highfill. He's got seven now in the game. He's getting better. He's getting better as this thing goes on. This time elevating the fastball. He'll start down the zone with that fastball, and he's shown the ability to do this. Take it. Luca Tresh moves all the way on the outside part of the plate. He's trying to elevate it. Does back to back strikeouts to any in inning here in the seventh. Only a freshman six and two thirds. And here's Parker Noland. All one. 92 pitches and three arms in the bullpen, all of whom have been fabulous power pitchers. And this one to right, and a diving catch made by Devontae Brown. Pitching and defense wins championships, and right now they are up one zip, trying to go 2 0 in Omaha. Rare that Vanderbilt's made contact. When they have, Devontae Brown's been there to quiet him. Just let it breathe. <laughs> Party capital of the world, Omaha, Nebraska, for the College World Series. Think people are happy to be back at a ballpark? Especially when your team's up one zip. Lighter, and that is into left field. That's going to be a hit to lead off the inning. Tyler McDonough is aboard. And for the first time tonight, the leadoff man is aboard. Tatum hit a leadoff homer, but no one's been on. Watch the bat right here, fellas. Oh. Ouch. Ooh, hit him three times. Taking his time right now behind the plate. It's scary right there. That bat made contact four times. One with a baseball, another with a mask, and twice. You ever seen an umpire get hit with a bat like that? I've seen catchers do that. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen an umpire. Johnny Butler, right field. It'll be playable as Thomas went back and now camps under it to make the play. Jumped on the first pitch. No, because if it hit the umpire in the mask, where would it have gotten Rodriguez? Yeah, that's a that's a sweet part of the bat. Well, here comes Terrell Tatum, the designated hitter. It is 12th home run of the year. It's one nothing, and that's how we got here. Two hits each team. Oh. It was a fastball down and in the Tatum hit to the seats in right. Johnny Butler in game one of the College World Series with his homer and five RBIs Tatum tonight. Next pitch for Jack Leiter will be number 90. Tatum's got really good speed. He has a couple of sacrifice hits this season. How about that? That was the first 2 0 count, and now he's 3 0 right here. Would not be surprised with what Tatum did last time. Gets a green light. Remember, this is the first time he's been in a stretch hole game. Yeah. I mean, the only hit he had given up was a solo home run in the fifth inning. So the first pitch he threw in the stretch was in the seventh. Hey. 
watch Tatum right here. This ball could be up. He's like, okay. That's what happens when you hit one around 430 feet time before. Hey. Oh, hmm. <laughs> what a pitch. Fastball, curveball, and now guest mode for Tatum. What are you doing here, Kyle? Uh, I think he comes back for Egan Ball. Runner goes in the dirt ball four, first and second, one out in the seventh. Love putting McDonough in motion right there. And I understand it's ball four. He's going to end up on second base anyway with the outcome, but it's still keeping the pedal down with a one run lead right now. McDonough has good speed. Now two on one out for NC State in the middle of their lineup. And Scott Brown, the pitching coach, will make his way out for the first time tonight. So the rocker lighter combination have thrown consecutive games most of the year. They won both of those games 10 times. They split those games five times and they lost both once. That happened in the SEC tournament. The winner tonight goes on to Friday night's game. There'll be two and zero, oh, and one more win for either NC State or Vanderbilt will put them into the College World Series finals which will start on Monday. And the loser has a much more difficult road. They will get Stanford. And that's a key stat right there. 25 of the last 30 have started 2 and 0. Jose Torres with McDonough at second, Tatum at first. Ball one. And a little different Jack Leiter in this inning. First pitch tried to keep the ball down. See if he fed off Torres's aggressiveness to hit the ball on the ground and try to get two. Torres can get that in the line pretty good. Loves these moments. That's Chris McElvain, one of the relievers for Vanderbilt. Two on, 2-0 two -oh count, big pitch. Fastball by him at 93. Let's stay right there. to right that's going to get into the first row and now it's two balls two strikes Jose Torres originally from the Dominican in Maryland you know him down in Miami first time he was scouted he made three errors but he made such an impression with his movements in the field, they went back the next day and got him. This is a slow roll. This is a tough play all around. Just eat that. He's safe at first. The bases are loaded now for NC State. Nothing that Jason Gonzalez could do with that. Now give yourself a chance. Just put it in play and see what happens. Works just as good. Base is loaded right now. One out. They put the pressure on Jack Leiter.
And that brings Luca Tresh to the plate. Struck out, hit a ball hard to the shortstop in the fifth. Base is loaded, one nothing. And lighter on the ropes here with one down. Pitch number 99. Strike one at the knees at 94. Well, you got to stay in the box, bud. Thank you. McDonough is at third. Tatum at second. Torres at first. Pitch 100. He's gone five batters now without a strikeout. Given he's got a dozen, he hasn't had a string like that at all tonight. No, no, what do you got? Stay with it. The fastball, fastball, fastball. I believe that the line drive that Tresh hit to short was on a breaking ball it earlier. Is. It was. But in this situation, all game long, after he's 0-2, he's shown the fastball up, and then he goes to the curveball down. See if he changes up his M.O. Outside! 2-2, two and, two, and that was 96 miles an hour. It may have been the fastest pitch that Leiter has thrown. Just up. I will say, NC State has been terrific with their patience. They have not Absolutely. chased any of those balls that have been up and out. They've been great. And it's forced the pitch count up in what will likely be the last inning for Leiter, and he knows it. Two and two. That's strike three at 96. And it's strike out 13, two down. Still got plenty in the tank right here. Best fastballs of the game have come in this seventh inning. Fastball 96 elevated up out of the zone. And just takes that four seamer and throws it right by Tresh. And now the right fielder Devante Brown. Gets the high strike. Yeah, that one's up. That one's up, and there's been a few high strikes called, but that that one side to side today for Billy Van Rapport has been outstanding. Um, it, there's been a few that just look to be up and out of the zone, but by and large, he's had a good night, real good night. from Devontae Brown as Leiter has found a new gear with his velocity in this inning. Base is loaded, one down. And with the bases full, 0 for 9, 8 strikeouts. And he's talking to himself out there. Needing one more. Will not chase. They have stayed off of that one all night. Game one, Brown hit a home run. One and two. Oh. Two and two. He's got 13 bombs, 40 runs batted in. And two big grand slams this season. Got him, 
swinging 96. Strikeout 14, he leaves him loaded. Back to Highfill, pitching a shutout as we head to the eighth. one nothing, NC State. State left him loaded. That was awfully impressive from Jack Leiter. And as we saw, 96 on the radar gun. And now we're back to Sam Highfield, who hasn't had that electricity, but my goodness, has he been awfully, awfully impressive, lulling Vanderbilt to sleep here. He's got him in a hold. I mean, listen, the fastball's been low 90s for the yep. most part the entire night. The, the difference is with that changeup, the fastball is going to play up even more. I don't. I'd put that one in my pocket. The other <laughs> stuff's too good. Man. I mean, there, there's a time where you got to change a look up, but the guy's given up two hits the entire day, and both are singles. He has been locked in. Yes, he has. One one to C.J. Rodriguez. That's oh. high. Two balls and a strike. There he is, Evan Justice. 12 saves, 72 strikeouts in 58 innings, starting to get loose. Packed house, a TD Ameritrade watching an incredible pitching duel between Sam Highfill for NC State, Jack Leiter for Vanderbilt. 2-2 two -two to Rodriguez. He went back to that sidearm, and it's 3-2. This is 7, 8, and 9 for Vanderbilt. They are the visiting team batting in the top of the eighth. Oh, that was close. Highfield wanted it, didn't get that call, and it's a leadoff walk. Second walk of the game for Sam Highfield, but, and he's really filled it up tonight. Elevated fastball that time, the slider. We haven't seen too many of those. Okay, it did work a few times today when he dropped down and change up there. Fastball up and elevated, and the change up to get the strikeout looking. Seven strikeouts tonight for High Phil. Second walk, though, was a leadoff man on here in the eighth inning. Javier Vaz squares, gets it down to first. He is tagged out. And down to second base goes C.J. Rodriguez. Good effort by High Phil to pounce off the mound, make sure he had it in his glove, and tagged Javier Vaz. But now it's Vanderbilt for the first time tonight with a runner in scoring position. It's fundamental baseball right there. You have C.J. Rodriguez, not a fast runner. Moving him over was Vaz. And now you end up getting a pinch runner for C.J. at second base. Cooper Davis. Let's not forget last time he was the pinch runner at first base. In game one for Vanderbilt. Yeah. So, KP, you have Justice out there, who's been great. You have one out in the eighth inning. If you're Avent or Clint Chrysler, when when do you make the move? I do it now. Do you? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I, I think the toughest thing for a pitching coach and a head coach to do um, is this. When so far the outcome is telling you everything has been great. Yeah, Gonzalez at the plate, who was the star in the opener, he can hit it out and change the game right away. And I got a left hander down to the bullpen that's going to show you 95 to 97. I, it's that constant decision of do you make a move before things start to maybe move a little bit too quick? And felt like they would go to the left hander and they do right here. 
So Sam Highfield's night will be over. He'll hand it over to Evan Justice. He ends up with seven strikeouts. He has allowed only two hits to Vanderbilt, and he was outstanding. Here comes Justice. Highfield will wait. And as he exits, we'll take a timeout as well. What a night for the freshman. Welcome back here, Monday night, TD Ameritrade Ballpark in Omaha, Nebraska. Sam Highfield, the freshman, a leadoff walk, sacrificed to second. He comes out of the game with two walks, seven Ks, and matched Jack Leiter pitch for pitch. And now we turn it over to the junior out of Richmond, Virginia, Evan Justice. He gets Jason Gonzalez, the hitting hero for Vanderbilt in game one. Vanderbilt got Cooper Davis, the pinch runner at second base. Tyler McDonough fairly shallow in center field given what Gonzalez is capable of with his power. In the dirt, nice job behind the plate by Luca Tresh. You didn't see it, but Jose Torres was sprinting to back up third base just in case. Davis decided to try to go from second. That's a heck of a block right there. Justice two nights ago through three innings faced 12 batters 46 pitches asked upon now to get the final five outs here in this game. Behind two and oh really good one at the knees and away two and one. Three balls and a strike to the number nine hitter with Enrique Bradfield waiting on deck. On the ground a second good hop there Jarrett gets the second out down to third base Davis. So while we have excitement here, we know we'll have a lot more coming up in just a little while. Mookie Betts and the L.A. Dodgers. Just a couple of games separate them and the Padres in the NL West. That's at 10 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. The business to do here at TD Ameritrade in Omaha. And biggest at bat for Vanderbilt all night is the leadoff hitter Enrique Bradfield. The Wolfpack feel incredibly confident when this guy's on the mound. Hey. One and one. That one at the knees called strike one. Evan Justice was a starter until March 29th. They threw him to the bullpen, and he has done nothing but put up zeros. Two and one. Good pitch. Two balls, two strikes, some movement underneath the arms of Bradfield. That two seamer took off right there. He'd been away, away, away. Two seamer started in. Watch his late movement. Bradfield starts his swing, and it is boring in on his hands. Now 2 2, and Bradfield has seen all fastballs so no, far. No. That's in there, strike three. You may have heard the home plate umpire say, nope, nope, not sure if Bradfield wanted to get time, but he got locked up there by Evan Justice. Goes away, 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 then with the two-seamer in, and then freezes him right here. 
pitch in. No justice at all for Vanderbilt, but a lot of it for the Wolfpack. We're going to the bottom half of the eighth. The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Sam Heifel, Evan Justice, Monday tonight for NC State. Five hits in the game, NC State leading it one to nothing thanks to a Terrell Tatum home run. They left him loaded last inning. Jack Leiter is back on the mound for Vanderbilt. Bit of a surprise. And the first pitch he throws, a hanging curveball that's dumped into left field. Boyatek Menchik is aboard. I'm a little surprised here. Thought he was done. I thought emotionally he was done in the last inning after having the bases loaded and pumping 96. And I think he thought he was going to be done as well. Let's see how he regroups right here. 110 pitches, a high stress inning in the bottom half of the seventh inning. This is a butt for sure. Seven sacrifices for JT Jarrett. Popped up, and that's a mistake for Jarrett. Usually so fundamentally sound, but he got under it. And he is out on a pop out to Dominic Keegan. You won't see that happen very much. I mean, it, it, it looked like it was push by. Yeah. Instead of trying to deaden it and sacrifice it, that ball came off hot. And watch the action right there. It's he's moving into it instead of trying to deaden it. That's what you want to do if you're a lighter pitch. Give you some heat on the top part of the zone. Get that pop up. Hey. Strike one to Austin Murr. And the no hitter he threw in his first game in the conference. Lighter threw 124 pitches. Benchik has got 10 stolen bases on the season at first base, and they'll throw over there again. Avon picked up his 900th career win earlier this year. This would be the biggest one of his career if he can get it moved to 2 0 in the World Series and be within a win of getting to the World Series finals. And 36 and 18 on the season. Two and two.
Strikeout number 15 for Leiter. Murr with the bat on his shoulder goes back to the bench. And it's been a display, KP. If you yeah. look at it right here, fastball. This time freezes him in the bottom of the zone. Look, last inning, he re reared back and threw 96. Right now, that was 91 in the bottom half, still having his nasty breaking pitch to go along with it. They got the lefty Fisher up, but they leave Leiter in to deal with the lefty Tyler McDonough. All one. First pitch in the dirt. You know, guys, we talk all the time about the major league pitchers and the starters. They go five innings, six innings, and come out of the game. Here you are with a stud in college throwing into the eighth with 117. What's the difference? Days off. Yeah. Right? You end, you end up having. But I mean, the starters get five or six innings. They come out. Here's a starter. And starters five. have days off in the majors, and Wojcik will take advantage of this and go down to second base. Not C.J. Rodriguez behind the plate right now. Yeah, Maxwell Romero Jr., that fastball just up, and it's almost like he was trying to frame it a little bit too much. Um, I mean, Rav, to your point, I, I think I think the thought process at this point, because Vanderbilt's got tomorrow off regardless, so even if you bring somebody in and you throw them a third of an inning, they're going to be hot in two days. I think the thought process is, at this point, we think the lighter stuff is better than the stuff that we're going to go do down in the bullpen. And one more guy reaches, then I think they immediately go down to the bullpen. I was with Eddie. I was surprised he ran back out there in the end. Stuff's looked fine. Um, but it is. We just don't see at the next level anybody throw 119 pitches. No, you don't. Huh. I mean, you also, you know, you get four or five different guys you can pick from out of the bullpen right. at the next level or throw yep. 98. Yep. So, <laughs> not to say Vanderbilt's that far off, but they've got a few guys down there that can do close to the same. Two and one. McDonough, that's outside. Three and one. There you go. That is the literal bird's eye view as Scott Johnson, our director, all over that. Got the drone flying just above the light stanchion. And a very dangerous hitter, Johnny Butler, on deck. 3 1. Nope. Hesitating and not going to throw. Here comes the number one, fellas. 3 2. That curveball hasn't been working for him. I'd be surprised right now if he goes to it. Let's go some high heat. Looking for a strikeout 16 and will not get it with that pitch. As a pitcher called the last part of the conversation is there are people who would look at Leiter and think this is jeopardizing his arm his future is that overstating it. Yeah entirely I think that it is. Yeah I mean if you're doing this time in and time out if you're doing it on short rest there's a variety of things the other thing is nobody really knows. Right. I mean just throwing 80 or 120 or 40 jeopardize you anymore but no one time out doing this I, done to me at all. And this ball is hit to straightaway center field. Bradfield calls off Thomas, and he's there to make the play. Bottom of the eighth in the books. Chance. CAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Glistening performance from Sam Highfill to start, and now Evan Justice will try to get the last three outs. And carry on on the winner's side of the bracket. He'll get Carter Young, Dominic Keegan, and Troy Leneve. Two, three, and four. 16 home runs. 
for Young. Get strike one. That's a good start for Justice. Don't forget Dodgers Padres about 30 minutes from now on the West Coast. Outside. That's off one and one. Good pitch. Good pitch, good take. Right there. Justice had them both going so far. Two seam fastballs, good movement, and slider's good. That's Do you think it was there? there? Yeah. I thought that was a strike. That was. <laughs> On the swing, I love it. And again, you're a hitter, you have to think middle the other way because there's a lot of tail on it. You make contact. Hard contact and you're trying to pull it. It's going to go right to the short hands. The tour is at short. The 2 2 to Young. Fastball popped up towards the seats and it's going to get into the seats here at TD Ameritrade. Carter Young hit that go ahead two run home run in the seventh inning of game one against Arizona. Six foot, 180 pound sophomore at a Washington State. Early on against FIU, late in the season, dislocated his left shoulder and he stopped swinging the bat from the right side. But he calls for time. You know, Bradfield, you heard the home plate umpire Van Rapport's last inning say, no, no. Bradfield was looking to get time out. 2-2 two, two, and another one out of play. He had said time, time, put up his left hand, and Van Raphorst didn't give it to him. The pitch came in, and he was frozen on a justice strikeout. All right, baby, one more. Oh! NC State trying to do to Vanderbilt what hasn't been done since March of 2019, which has shut them out. They have not been shut out once this year. 3 2. All four. Couple of close pitches. There was some down that were called balls, and that one up called a ball. Leadoff man is aboard. And some borderline pitches right there that could have been called strikes. Third time to start an inning that Vanderbilt has gotten on base via the walk. So far, no runs across. Six foot, 210 pound junior Dominic Keegan. Nine stolen bases for Young at first. Leaning back in the first pitch, strike number one, 91 on the outside corner. Big hole between first base and the second baseman, JT Garrett. Fastball tailing away. That's where you want to hit it. Ball's down. Elliot Avent has gone to the top step and was leaning over, barking at the home plate umpire about these ball strike calls. Uh, boy, one more. Good swing at it. One and two as he fouled it off. And he is not pleased with the calls that he's seen in this inning. Watch Carter Young at first. Every time that Justice is set to throw, he's leaning back towards first. And this one on the ground. Jarrett Torres. Big double play for NC State. And they are one out away from moving on at 2-0.
four six three double play the most interested spectator is Sam Highfield. Tell you what that was a great approach right there by Keegan hit it hard but right at the sure hands of Jarrett at second base. The righty Tate Colwick sent up as a pinch hitter. I feel and Justice have held Vanderbilt to no runs and two hits. Them right there with the breaking ball. That's pretty impressive. I mean, just all the way around. Evan Justice comes in, gets the last five outs. Sam Highfield was outstanding for NC State today. Jack Leiter goes complete game, punches out 15, gives up four hits, and gets beat. That's a good college baseball game, folks. Take a look at our Capital One players of the game. Sam Heifel took him into the eighth. He struck out seven and gave up only two hits. The freshman was phenomenal. And Terrell Tatum's solo home run in the fifth inning, the only run of the game. And Elliot Avent and his good luck rock and the necklace and keychain from his dad carry them to their first 2-0 start in the College World Series. Kumal Rocker pitched, he didn't get a win. Jack Leiter pitched, he'll end up getting a loss. So NC State in the driver's seat, we'll see them again Friday. Wednesday, Vanderbilt and Stanford. The loser eliminated, the winner will take on NC State on Friday. Mississippi State and Virginia tomorrow night, 7 Eastern time on ESPN2, and Texas and Tennessee tomorrow on ESPNU, that's an elimination game. You said it perfectly. That's a great college baseball game. Yeah. And the defense set the tone from the get-go. Yeah. Boychik's play on that bunt from Bradfield. First batter of the game was huge. Here's Chris. Well, Sam, you just shut out the reigning national champions. How'd you do it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I had a lot of help behind me. Good pitch calling. Good, uh, good defense back there from Luke and from the guys in the... Uh, in the field and <laughs> I don't know we got it done a freshman on this stage what were the nerves like when you went out there uh, they were there um, but I played in some some tough environments the last couple of weeks Louisiana Tech and then Arkansas last week and you know we had a lot more of our guys here to support us tonight so your mom your dad your grandpa all went to NC State yeah. as you hear the fans chant What's this moment feel like? It's awesome. I, I, I always dream coming here. 
growing up and being able to pitch in games like these, it's unbelievable. How has this team been able to make this ridiculous run? Well, <laughs> I, I go back to when we were we were one and eight in the ACC. I think four and nine overall. And uh, coach came in the locker room and he was like, "We're gonna go on a run, and uh, it's it's gonna happen sometime." And <laughs> and sure enough, uh, it's happened. We stuck with it. These guys are unbelievable. Well, it's happening. I appreciate it, Sam. Congratulations. Thank you so much. What a performance from the freshman from Apex, North Carolina. How about the last four starts? Georgia Tech, six and a third, one run. Louisiana Tech, five and a third, no runs. He held Arkansas in check, and tonight gives up nothing against Vanderbilt. Pitching, defense, and timely hitting, and that's what NC State was able to do tonight. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. We're only three days into this thing. We get it. Look, we get to see it all live, too. We're not done. We got a lot left. A lot left is right. Phenomenal job by everybody involved here in the truck and for the people behind Scott Gustafson and Scott Johnson. For Chris Button down on the field, Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, I'm Carl Ravitch. Hope you all enjoyed it. We got much more baseball coming up. Monday Night Baseball, Dodgers and Padres, top of the hour. We continue tomorrow at 2 on ESPNU, Tennessee and Texas. Kevin Connors, the bridge in the studio.